today I'm going to open with two lovely quotes. The first one says, when you stop expecting people to be perfect, you can like them for who they are. Donald Miller. And the second says, far too many people are looking for the right person instead of trying to be the right person. Gloria Stainham. Welcome to today's episode of the Afrocentrist Podcast. Today on the show, I'll be talking to a relationship coach. Her name is Tanaz Hussein Poor, and she is a family mediator and CBT practitioner based in Dubai and Toronto with an academic background in management and dispute resolution law. She's also a certified life coach, IAC, specializing in personal development and relationships. She is the host of her self-improvement podcast show titled Minutes on Growth. All right, guys. So my guest is here, Tanaz, who is a relationship coach. How are you doing, girl? I miss you. I, I miss you more. I'm so happy to see your face. It just brings so much joy into my day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for having this conversation with me. All right. So Tanaz, I know that you are a relationship coach and I've, I've been following your work for quite a while now. And so today on this show, I know that it's also that time of the year where people begin to evaluate, you know, their year, how it has gone. I mean, this year has been a spectacular one, right? And a lot of things have changed, even in the way we relate with each other. Some people are meeting or met themselves afresh this year. I miss the lockdown. Some people met their spouses afresh this year. Like, oh my God, I've been living with you these years. I didn't know this about you, right? <laughs> and some people yeah. literally, you know, literally um, realize like, gosh, I've been in a toxic relationship for so long and I didn't have an idea, like even from friends to friends, you know? So I want us to talk about repositioning for better relationships, even as we go into the new year. How can people begin to evaluate their relationships and how can they position well to have fantastic or more amazing relationships in the coming year? Wow, um, it's such a deep question. <laughs> I mean, I think the word of the year for me is definitely intention. Mm -hmm. And we really want to bring intention into everything we do. And that includes the communities that we're part of from the friendships that we cultivate and the relationships that we're in. And I was watching the Tony Robbins seminar and I learned something that I really loved. And he said, you know, we have three groups of people in our lives. The first one is toxic people. So these are the people, they're the energy vampires. They are the people that are completely, I wouldn't say, you know, they're toxic. I would say they are toxic for us. So mm. at some level, we're not vibing with them. We, they don't understand us and it's just not the type of friendship that you want to invest your time in that you want to get intentional with. Mm. The second group of people are our friends and our family. And the third group of people, they are a personal development tribe. Now, what usually tends to happen is when we embark on a personal development journey, and, and 2020 has done this for a lot of people, it's been a wow. year of awakening, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone's eyes are open to what is this life that I have? Is this something I actually want? Is this mm -hmm. job the job that I want? Mm -hmm. So as we embark on this personal development journey, we, we get a lot of aha moments. So we get a lot of insights. And naturally, what we want to do is we want to share that with people around us. So we pick up our phone and we start calling our family members and our friends, and we want to share all of that with them. Mm. The issue here is they might not be on the same personal development journey as you. So if you bombard them with all of these new insights, it might actually create a sense of resentment if they feel that you are coming from this place of... I'm superior to you. I have, mm -hmm. I have more knowledge. Mm -hmm. I, I know more. And, you know, you can have a really good friend who is supportive, who is kind, who is respectful, reliable, responsive, but just isn't on a personal development journey. And that's perfectly fine, right? Mm -hmm. So all of the personal development topics 
and insights, we want to share that with people who are in the same journey as us. So the people in our seminars, the people in our classes, they are the tribe that we can talk to about these things because they're experiencing the exact same things. And with our friends and family, we want to become an embodiment of what it is that we are preaching without actually preaching it. So you want to walk the talk, you want to practice what you preach, Mm. and you want to be the person that is an embodiment of it. So when your friends and family are ready to embark on this journey, they know they can come to you. So that's the most beautiful part is really showing them what is possible and not doing it in a verbal way. And when we can accept people for who they are, Oh, the dynamic of our friendship changes. The issue is in most relationships, we are always trying to change the other person. We are always trying for them to be someone else. But the whole point is to accept someone and to love them as they are in that moment. And when we love people for who they are, we give them space to, you know, do what works for them, but also at the same time to know that if they do ever want to level up, we're there for them without judgment, with full compassion, and in a very loving and respectful way. So I would say first things first, categorize your people, right? Look mm-hmm. at the people in your life and ask yourself, which category do they, fill it, do they fit in? Mm-hmm. And then take it from there. And, you know, we only live once. Yeah. And, I, and I always say, like, visualize the life that you want. And then ask yourself, who do I need to be? to have that life? Mm. Who do I need to be surrounded by? Who do I need to be talking to? Mm. Where do I need to be spending my time? How do I need to be spending my time? Right? Becoming very, very intentional with your routine. How are you starting your day? On the weekends, you know, when, when you're speaking to your friends, do you feel empowered or do you feel limited? becoming the co-creator of your life, right? So it's you and the universal force together coming together and creating that vision. Because if you have the vision, it is destined for you. I cannot say this enough. Me and you, Ajir, we have different visions for our life. And that's, that is powerful because my vision is unique to me. And if it exists within me, it means my soul has the potential to manifest it. Mm. Same for you and same for every single individual in this world. Mm -hmm. But our community is very, very, very important because Jim Rohn says we are the average of the five people we spend the most of our time with. So when you're with your friends, what are you doing? Are you gossiping Mm. or are you... Are you, are you engaging in conversations that are up-leveling? Hmm. What conversations are you having with who? Sit down, ask yourself, write it down, think about it, and ask yourself, who am I going to take with me into 2021? Forget 2020. Oh, yeah. 2021, who is going to hold my hand and who am I going to embark on my highest vision with? Hmm. So profound, so profound. So how do you deal with situations where let's say this is your spouse now, you can't toss them away, (laughs) right? And um, it's feeling like, yes, you've given them space, you're giving them their space, you're allowing them and probably showing them, you know, how to become, you know, you're just doing your thing and allowing them to be who they can be, you know, like you said, show them, not tell them. But then what happens? How do you navigate it when it feels like they're not getting the message they're not ready to change. They're not ready to level up. I, I know, you know how frustrating that can be like, oh my God, should I tell him? Should I tell her? <laughs> how do you navigate that? I was just saying that relationships are kind of tricky in the way that, you know, especially if you're in a marriage, mm-hmm. you've committed to mm-hmm. someone, right? And, yeah. and we don't want, it's human, na- it's human nature. We don't want to fail, right? Mm-hmm. Like we don't want mm-hmm. to see the end of something. Mm-hmm. We, we get comfortable. It's our comfort zone. Our relationships become our comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And this old saying, if you don't grow together, you're going to grow apart. And we become better versions of ourselves. Mm-hmm. We give other people permission mm-hmm. to also grow and level up, right? This is a fact. Like when someone 
when you tell someone to do something, chances of them doing it is actually really slim, especially when you're in a relationship. If you tell someone, do this, the chances of them actually doing that is not, not, is not as high as them wanting to change, right? Change comes from the self. You can tell someone all, every single day, you know, don't throw your shirt on the floor, put it into the dresser. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to do it until they decide they want to do it. Mm -hmm. So my first, first piece of advice is focus on you, focus on yourself, on how mm -hmm. you can become a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at what areas in your life that you can focus on. So, you know, what are we, we all have flaws. Mm -hmm. um, I won't call them um, innate flaws because we're born perfect. We're born Whole. But as a result of years of social conditioning, we put on these labels on ourselves. So when we're adults, what we kind of do is have to go back and unlearn a lot of the stuff that we learned during childhood. It's like removing all these labels one after the other. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do. We want to focus on our own labels, focus on our own shortcomings, work on that. And in a relationship, like there's so much that goes into it, right? And we don't notice this. Like when I'm sitting with my, uh, with my um, clients or when I'm doing seminars and I speak about, you know, the different communication styles that we can have in a relationship and the things that we're not supposed to do in a relationship, mm -hmm majority of the audience notices that they're doing all of that. Whoa. But the issue is that we think we're perfect, right? We have this illusion. And I read this book and it was, it was magnificent because she says that she's a marriage counselor and she says that, you know, couples come to me and the wife says, I don't understand why my husband is doing this. I'm such a perfect wife. And I asked them how long he's been married. And she's like, one year. I'm like, how can you be perfect at something you've only done for a year? Right. <laughs> so it takes science has shown that it takes 10 years to become perfect at something. So mm -hmm. how can you claim to be perfect at marriage if this is your first marriage and this is your first time and it's only been 365 days? You can't even become perfect at <laughs> piano in that long, let alone something that involves another human being with another set of emotions and beliefs and thoughts and opinions. Mm -hmm. So if we enter into a relationship with this belief that I'm not perfect, mm -hmm. my husband's not perfect. Mm -hmm. But we are willing to work mm -hmm. together and work on these imperfections together and to grow together. Mm -hmm. And when we do a mistake, to take accountability of that mistake and say, I messed up, mm -hmm. right? Conflict is super normal. If a relationship doesn't have conflict, I would be really, really surprised. Mm -hmm. and, but how we communicate our conflict, mm -hmm. how we repair once we've communicated our conflict, that is a huge one. Repairing is huge. How quickly am I going to take accountability for my words and my actions? How quickly am I going to apologize when I'm wrong? How quickly am I going to let my ego down when I'm discussing something of importance with my partner? Mm -hmm. That's what is going to be um, the, the changing point in a relationship. And just, I'm just going to quickly, quickly say this, like, I'm going to talk briefly about four communication situations that happen in relationships. And the first one is criticism, right? Mm -hmm. We're constantly criticizing the character of our partner instead of what, what is actually the situation. So, yeah. you know, you come home, the dishes are, are, are like still in the sink. Instead mm -hmm. of saying, you know, I feel really bothered when I'm, when I'm home and I see dishes, it makes me feel really anxious or it makes me feel unorganized. Mm -hmm saying that you're a dirty person, you're so dirty, you don't care, you're so, you know what, we're, we're attacking the yeah, other person's yeah. character. And we do this all the time. And what happens when you criticize someone, it's a ping pong between criticism and defensiveness. Yeah. The other person gets defensive yeah. and goes like, I'm dirty, look at you, you're dirty, right? <laughs> and it's going back and forth, back and forth mm -hmm. until it explodes. Mm -hmm. And that is something that we want to uh, become really conscious of. We want to avoid, we want to avoid criticizing, we want to avoid um, getting defensive. Mm -hmm. And the third thing that we want to um, pay attention to is stonewalling. And what is stonewalling? Stonewalling is someone comes and tells us, tells us how they feel and we we enter into physiological flooding. We freeze, right? And we're not doing this on purpose. It's it's a it's a, it's a body reaction to it. What we want to do is when we notice that our partner is having a physiological flooding, we want to give them space. We want to give them twenty minutes for the body to um, calm down and to uh, regulate itself again. But what what happens is. When, when we're talking to our partner and our partner's not listening to us, right? And they're 
they're experiencing that. We take it first thing. We're like, you don't care about me. Like, it's like, as if I'm talking to the wall, like, why don't you listen to me? Why don't you love me? Like, you don't care about this relationship, right? Hmm. Again, it turns into criticism. And the last one that we want to avoid all costs is contempt when we make like sarcasm, right? So verbally speaking, we're getting sarcasm. We're rolling our eyes. We're smirking. Like, ugh, like, I don't know what kind of family you were raised in. Like, I don't know how your mom raised you. Oh, wow. This yeah. is so, so important. And we don't notice that, that we are actually engaging in contempt. Wow. So these four, they're actually called the four horsemen and it's by Dr. John Gottman. And people can research it by the Gottman Institute. There's so much resources on that. But really learning, becoming aware of the four horsemen and asking ourselves, are we practicing this in our relationship? Mm. If we aren't, then we need to become conscious of it and we need to make shifts so that when, for example, something bothers us, we are able to express it to our partner. We're able to complain and not criticize, right? Mm. So complaining is when something happens, I feel this going forward, I need this from you. When we communicate our desires, our wishes, our values in a healthy way, Mm. Chances of us being heard goes up. Chances of us, you know, fixing that situation in the relationship significantly goes up. Yeah. Majority of the problems in a relationship can be resolved. Mm. The only, when there is an issue of abuse, I'm not for it. So if there's any verbal, physical, emotional, sexual abuse, that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But if there's no abuse present, just learning these little tips, yeah. game changer. It can change your relationship. True, true. Just listening to them alone even, you know, makes it, it makes a lot of sense to say, okay, yeah, 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 this really makes sense. Like I can just imagine it already, especially I think I'm hearing, I'm hearing the, the part where you say um, your partner can freeze when you are trying to, you know, tell them about something. I've never you know, noticed that before, but now I can, I can play in my head to say, Oh, I see. I think, I think, <laughs> yeah, I need to make adjustments. Right. Because I'm like, dude, you're not listening. Are you even paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> right I mean all of us say like literally it's your like I do this all the time like I've noticed that the 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 horseman that I stick to the most is criticism right mm. so I need to become really conscious of that and not make not attack the other person's character mm. it has nothing to do mm. with their character but everything to do with the situation. We want to focus on the situation instead of the character. Mm -hmm. And speaking of stonewalling, I just want to say another game changer is if you want to discuss something with your partner, please ask for consent. Now, what does this mean is usually when something is bothering us, we're like, honey, I need to talk to you. We don't even allow the person to say, okay, we're like, I really like, I just don't understand why you're doing this and X, <laughs> Y, and Z. And we bombard them, right? Like, like what just happened? The other person's like, and that's usually when stonewalling happens because mm -hmm. they're like so overwhelmed. Their nervous system goes into overdrive mm -hmm. and that's when the physiological flooding happens. Mm -hmm. But if we learn to ask for consent and what that means is, honey, I want to discuss something of importance with you. Let me know when you have the time and the mental capacity, because mm -hmm. just because someone has time doesn't mean they have the mental capacity to process new information. Mm -hmm. This was the biggest game changer in my own relationship wow. because I noticed that my partner was coming home. So you're not in the office, you're watching TV, you're on your phone. Obviously you have time, so you have time to listen to me. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that some days he was just so mentally blocked from work that he couldn't even listen to, he couldn't understand what I was saying. Mm -hmm. So when I, when we, when I opened this discussion and I said, listen, I've learned the art of consent. Can we, can we practice it in our relationship? Now, if I say, honey, I want to speak about something, he's either going to say, yes, I have the capacity. Let's talk about it now. Or do you mind if we talk about it at dinner tonight or in an hour or tomorrow lunch, right? And we want to do it within a 24 hour time slot. Mm -hmm. But what it does is then, you know, when you're having that discussion, mm -hmm. you're going to be hurt. Mm -hmm. Yes. I He's going to listen. We're going to listen. You're both going to hear each other up. Yeah, game, 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 game. Very, very profound. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much to Naz for sharing this beautiful tips with us today. If people wanted to connect with you to say, who I love the way she sounds. I want to work with her. How can they do that? 
You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Minutes on Growth. My website is also www.minutesongrowth. I have a lot of free resources. I have guided journals. I have a podcast that you can listen to as well. It's called Minutes on Growth Podcast, where I share snippets on spirituality, relationships, mindset, conscious entrepreneurship, anything. Um, so yeah, definitely. Uh, if there's any questions, send me a DM. And if I can, I'll get back to you. And uh, yeah, sending everyone love. Like this was a hard season, you know. but me with the right community, we can get through it. And I believe that human beings are honestly the kindest creatures on the planet mm-hmm. we are tra- we're traditionally tribal people we we thrive when we're part of communities and you know we're innately good we are innately perfect and we just need to focus on that and we need to know that everything that is happening is for our highest good and keep the faith and keep going Hmm, fantastic. That's a powerful close. Thank you so much to Naz. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That will be all that I can take on today's episode of the Afrocentrist podcast. Until I come your way again next week, do remain amazing and compliment of the season to you and yours. Bye-bye.